Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like time is back again got the crew we're talking about why some of the most realistic lures like this pinfish bait fish whatever the heck this red pin shad i'm, I'm thinking of the pinfish because that was the first time i bought one of these and i was so excited to use it and i didn't catch what with it and why so many of these really realistic lures that all kind of fool us as fishermen in a tackle store don't actually work that well where some of these tried and true Lures like a bucktail, which looks nothing like I've ever seen in the water, or this Alabama leprechaun jerk shad. Haven't really seen a bait fish swimming around like that. Spoon, gold spoons. We have all these things that don't look like anything, and yet they keep working year after year, decade after decade. So um, we're going to try not to bash any one company or brand. Same point, we always try to be the consumer reports here at Salt Trump because we don't have any sponsors. We've had a lot of people offer and we reject every single one because we want to tell you like it is. We want to honestly, we want you to have the best stuff and catch more fish per hour than ever before, which is the whole mission behind Salt Strong and, and really the whole reason we created our insider club. So we got Luke, we got Tony, we got Justin. Guys, where do we even start here? Do we want to talk about these lures that have kind of fooled us as fishermen first? I kind of do. Um, I'll, and I'll just tell you, my very first one was that big, I believe it was live target. It was a like big pinfish. I think it like won some awards at ICAST. And I, I get like disappointed in ICAST every year because they reward some of these things that just because they look so realistic and there's like zero proof they've ever even caught a fish before. It's like, oh, most innovative lure design and no one's ever caught a single fish with it. So I remember I got out there, Luke, we even did some underwater footage and this pinfish, it looked so realistic. Like you couldn't tell the difference between that and a real pinfish. And yet I couldn't get a bite on the thing. I, and, and I don't even know where it is. It's probably rusted out or thrown away at this point. Uh, and so that was like one of those, like, man, here I am buying. And that's, these are expensive lures, by the way, these realistic ones. I'm spending all this money and the things hardly even work. And yet we use things like Slam Shady and... I mean, look at this. This doesn't look like anything. I mean, I, you can kind of maybe say it does, but like these bucktail jigs and spoons, and yet these things just keep working, tried and true, day in and day out. Tony, look at that. What What is that thing? Come on. I've never seen anything like that underwater. Yeah, these, I don't know. They must, you know, resemble the profile when they're underwater, but... <laughs> You know, that's got to be the most unrealistic thing I've ever seen, but it catches really big snow. So. And and for those of you listening, Tony's got a, what, bright flare hawk. I don't even, it had hot pink and all kinds of colors. It looks yeah, nothing. Bright green. <laughs> bright green. Oh. All right. So what do, what do you got? Justin, Luke, what do you, what have you been uh, burned by uh, to start off first in terms of lures that look really realistic and just haven't produced? Uh, I remember... Uh, this is actually this is funny i gotta i gotta hold this one up and luke and i talked about this so i i have the live target uh live mullet or whatever they call it make two different color styles and a bunch of different sizes they make them in twitch baits they make them in top waters and i remember i went through a phase where um i really wanted to have super realistic mullet lures for the mullet run on the east coast of florida and looking back on that now and that makes sense it makes it, sense yes it makes sense but you know now later on and in an application i learned that you don't normally you want to match the hatch day in day out and i got these specifically thinking i want the most realistic mullet lure i want my lure to stand out amongst ten thousand mullet which was I don't know what I was thinking at the time. Now I'm throwing poppers, you know, just really loud, annoying, grab your attention baits. But I had a phase where I don't have it on me anymore, but I had the top water mullet. I had a big like seven inch twitch bait that looked just like this. Um, and I've gone through periods of time where when snook fishing uh, throughout the year on either coast, the live target, uh, these are the pinfish models. I've got one that's segmented in the back. So it just kicks the tail a little bit better, I guess. And then just kind of the, the day in day out uh, live target pilchard or scaled sardine. I can't remember which one they call it, but um, just, I want to just the most realistic twitch bait. You know, I've thrown Meridines, I've thrown Yozuri's, I've thrown 
Rapalas, all kinds. And I thought these were the most realistic. And I thought, well, it, it's got to be better, right? It looks more real. So it's got to catch more fish. Um, can't say that it's caught more fish than a, a mirror lure or any other Twitch bait. It's about the same. Yeah. And, uh, and so that, that mullet that Justin showed, so I, I went through a similar phase where I was like, okay, if it, if it looks more real, it's got to catch more fish. And so that was one that I got. I also got the pinfish Joe referred to earlier. So I'm on the fence with the, with the realistic. So realistic isn't bad. It's just when the, when the, the focus on the manufacturer is just to make it look as real as possible um, to sell to humans, right? Do human, is it attractive to humans or is it attractive to fish? Yes. When the, the, when the humans part supersedes the fish, then there's a problem. So that pinfish one, I, I've used them all, I've tested. So the pinfish one actually did hook up with a tarpon. We got in some tarpon down in Isle Mirada. Um, all small ones and I was throwing a lot of stuff. That was actually one that did get it, that did get a strike, but it was the, the human factor was so high on there. It looked, it looks amazing. Like I wish I could find it, but uh, it's not one that I ever use anymore. So it's somewhere buried in my spare bedroom, <laughs> but um, it, so it looks real. The, it actually looked pretty good in the water, but the, the, they had to make it look so real that the, the hookup ratio has got to be as, as horrendous because the, part of the fin actually sticks up and blocks a lot of the hook. It might, may, I mean, it might have been trying to make it weedless or something, but long story short, it, it just was, it wasn't really the, the function, the function really wasn't there. Form was amazing, function not so good. Um, another one I got is this shrimp. I can't make, remember who made it, but, uh, but it looks amazingly real. And I've thrown it on like snook lights when there's a lot of shrimp. You know, the, the fish are literally feeding on shrimp. I'm watching them eat shrimp. And I'll float this thing through and they didn't want anything to do with it. And then I threw one of these power prawns, which still looks kind of realistic, but not nearly as much as this. I mean, they literally went through the effort to get these little whiskers sitting up. They got all the legs and all that fancy stuff. That must have set you back a few extra bucks. It was like $10 shrimp. $10 <laughs> for one lure. Um, it's, a, it's a dollar per whisker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a very, this, this mean a lot. But, but I mean, they're so like, they, they do move a little bit, but it's just... It's just too much. And you can't even cast it well, right? Like all those little extremities just catches the wind. So you can't cast it worth a darn. And then, and then I threw this thing in there and the snook came up and, and, and smacked it. I think it just had better action in the water. Maybe it was just moving fast enough where this one was just like, just too slow with all that drag. Whatever the case was, the, the one that looked super real underperformed the one that didn't look quite as real. And that, that happens all the time. And even look at, like look at one of the tried true lures too and another one on top of the bucktail is a gold spoon like if i was brand new to fishing i saw this in the store i would think it's the you'd have to be an absolute idiot to buy it <laughs> and it were it flat out works like that i always have a few of these in my tackle box i prefer paddle tail i prefer soft plastics but when the puffer fish are bad that's when i go to these spoons it works all year long um shockingly well and that's but that's the problem these manufacturers know that what you just said is part of the problem is that, you know, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't think they're purposely trying to trick people. They're not trying to, you know, create products that don't catch fish. They'll, they'll never have, you know, repeat purchasers, but there, you got to toe that line of, Hey, let's find something realistic. So that some, you know, new guy or gal is going to come pick that off versus a gold spoon. Cause you're right. Like no one in their right mind, if they were brand new to fishing and hadn't watched like our videos or, or see a Richardson or anyone, who's who's been at it a long time in the intro world uh, how a gold spoon just continues to keep working no one in the right mind would buy it but they go out and spend you know twelve dollars fit twenty dollars on one artificial lure in some cases and man you lose that you get that caught uh or, or just obviously breaking off uh that hurts uh you know versus you know a bucktail that might be a, a dollar or two and even you know some of these soft plastics you know under definitely under a dollar each for all these things and uh, I don't know, it just, it, it baffles me. Uh, and, and it baffles me. And I'm mad at myself and I keep going back and buying more. Like, well, maybe this time it'll work. It looks so good. And and uh, I keep getting frustrated. Tony, what do you got? Yeah, so I never, I never really purchased too many of the things that looked fancy and realistic. It's because you look how smart you are. Your glasses, dude. You're always the <laughs> smartest guy on the, on the podcast. I think it only took me like one or two purchases to realize I pretty much wasted my money. But I did start to use a couple more different ones, you know, like a voodoo shrimp. They look pretty realistic. And then like the chase baits, uh, this is their flick prawn. 
And what I noticed is that it really comes down to the action and the presentation more than how realistic it looks. Because even though these do look super realistic, you know, they have a really good action in the water. The antennas move, the legs vibrate as it sinks. It has a little bit of a segment on the tail. Uh, Luke, if you could pick up that other shrimp you have, it's almost just like a stiff this toy. A <laughs> yeah, it's a brick. I mean, literally, like, have to, like, if you can kind of shake it, right? Like, you think the tail would shake a little bit, yeah. but it's like, it's... Um, Who makes that one, Luke? I can't remember. I think, it, I think it's live target, but I, think, I can't, I'm not 100% sure. But it's, I mean, look at that. They literally put the whiskers shooting way out of there. Yeah. Almost looks like a, a toy someone put a hook in. <laughs> As opposed to power prawn, where it's just like flapping up and down yeah. all the time. Power prawns. Yeah. All the action there. For but real. I mean, that that's what I've really found with these realistic versus non-realistic. It really comes down to the action, how you present it. Uh, like how Justin was talking about, you know, if you use something that looks identical to a mullet and you throw it in a school of mullet, what's going to make that lure stand out? as opposed to, you know, what's going to make that fish hit that lure as opposed to a, a live mullet that's right next to it. So okay. that's why I like to throw stuff that does stand out, that doesn't look realistic because that'll get the attention of the fish. They'll be like, what's that? It looks like it's dying. It looks like it's almost dead. I'm going to go after that because it's an easy meal. So to piggyback on, uh, on performance, I actually have two different mullet paddle tails and I have caught significantly more fish on the one in my right hand right here. Uh, this, I think, is a Savage Gear Pulse Tail Mullet. This came out sometime last year. And, um, you know, I think Live Target, they, they talked about tight vibrations and tight wiggle. And, and the focus being it's the most natural presentation of, of a swimming fish because bait fish when they're when they're when they're fleeing their tails are not pumping really really hard they're, they're really really tight and really erratic movements um this pulse tail mullet has got a pile of thump in the back of the tail and this tends to get hit you know clear water dirty water just because i think it has so much vibration and so much action um so the way that it performs is uh, it's not it's not a tight vibration i don't know it, it could truly be the application in which you throw it but overall for just side-by-side -side realistic mullet lure um i really think the presentation is what it speaks to you know just just a lot of attraction and yeah, uh since you mentioned that mullet the, the live target one you showed that that's actually one that really impressed me but and but specifically for tarpon yeah. i haven't caught any snook with it i've thrown in snook areas and, and redfish areas but um i had i had two different situations where Harp and we're all over that that exact one right there that's like the five or six inch uh, mullet and um, something about it tarp and love and and it kind of makes sense because when you're going after tarpon sometimes you know over time you've learned that imparting less action when fishing for tarpon makes a difference right people will throw little crappie jigs and little tiny things that don't look super realistic but just a straight swimming action not like you know going all over the place tends to get the bite with them so that might be what the ticket is with this lure is that it's just it's streamlined it's a tight wobble and that might be what the tarpon key in on so good point yeah, and a lot of it is going to come down to the species like tarpon. Uh, you know, we're a big fan, and this is one that does look really real, is the chase baits. Big fan of these. And these, I mean, these look crazy real. And and let's talk about sheep's head. Like, why why do you guys think these work so well? Yeah, those are the crust for those listeners, the crusty crab. It's a little small crab for sheep's head. I, I like it because just look at underwater footage yes it looks real but it also does have good motion like it has some action in the water because these legs you see i'm barely shaking it and these things are going all over the place whereas i'm shaking shaking the shrimp the same way and like nothing's moving at all so like just on the fall these little legs are, are moving around like it actually is enough to catch their attention and sheep's head are very wary fish so i I feel like sheep's head examined their meal way more than that's like, that's where I was going with that. Right. Yeah. Cause it, we're, we're in general, we're usually on the podcast and really just salt spring in general. It's the inshore fishing. And we're talking about redfish and snook and speckled trout and flounder that are more reactionary. They're just hardcore predator fish. And the sheep's head, if you watch them, they're, they're a little bit slower, they're a little bit pickier. Whereas like this past weekend in Fort Pierce, I was catching all those snook. I mean, I was, I was ripping that power prone. I was, I was, hit it super super hard and it was just that quick reaction strike they saw it going in the shadows and just nailed it 
Um, and so I think a lot of it is species specific too, which is, I mean, probably why gold spoon just keeps working, right? It's got a lot of flash and it's just right there in their face and they just can't resist swiping at it. Uh, whereas you tried that same thing in front of a sheep's head, like good luck, right? Have you ever caught a sheep's head on a gold spoon? I never have. No. It's probably, they hit paddle tails though. They'll, they'll hit, like I know uh, multiple, like uh, most people got them on the slam shady. Like Joe Schaefer's got a bunch on like little three, four inch paddle tails on the jig head. I still haven't, but they'll hit it. But even the spoon, like I did some underwater footage of the spoon. And so this is the the gold, you know, the gold Johnson silver minnow. And, and from behind, most of these fish, I've been doing a lot of underwater, um, underwater experiments where I tie the camera on the line and just watch the lure and, and how the fish comes up and gets it. And they they'll pretty much always come from behind. They'll see it from far far away, and they'll kind of slowly come in and then they'll track right behind and blow and so that spoon they're just seeing like a little wobble so it actually does look like a tail kind of fluttering around that's what they see and they come up and just eat it so they're not they're not so much what i've learned after looking at this underwater footage is that they're not really coming up to the side to examine it and it, and it makes sense right when you think about it that's the best way for them not to catch their meal if they come in right where the, the their prey can actually see them coming they come from behind, they come from behind and below. And so you really want to make sure that whatever that, that whatever it looks like from where they're approaching looks as realistic as possible. I think that's why paddle tails work so well because they're coming in there and those paddle, that tail is swishing around. They think it's that little tail of the fish going away and they come up, they literally just come up, come up, come up and just, just suck it down. It's been, it's been really mind blowing seeing, seeing it in action. That's cool. Do you guys think, um, Water clarity really comes into play too with realistic versus non. I think so. Because I think that's another reason why I haven't really dove into many of those realistic things is the water I fish is mainly dirty and going back to the action, you know, they don't have a lot of action. And if the water's dirty, you need that action to get the fish's attention. And if the water's dirty, they can't really see it in the first place. So if the water's super clean and you need more of a finesse presentation, can definitely excel i think in the clean water but the first time i took that big old pinfish you know where i was in isla mirada it's pretty clear water and the fish were laughing at me nothing and in this past weekend the water was super clear up in the flats in st pete i mean it looked like the keys and this alabama leprechaun <laughs> big down there was they were absolutely hammered and i mean big drop too not not little small ones and same with the paddle tail this is what i was using with the camera rig I mean, I caught multiple trout in the 22 to 24 inch class price, uh, at least on that size, at least six came up and slammed this lure, even though there was a camera like 12 inches in front of it. Um, they, they were just flat. You know, they, they just need to see something that looks like a, like a bait fish or like some sort of easy meal and they'll come up and, and swipe it. Yeah. Even in, so in clear conditions, you know, I got, I got a good story. This particular bucktail right here, I think it's got like a flat boxing, boxing glove style head, um, kind of like the mission fishing, but, uh, you know, in the summertime, I'd spend a week with my family. We go down to Sanibel and we'd snook fish. And, you know, when I was in high school and I was like, man, I really want to catch a lot of snook off the beach. And my dad, and my brother are doing research. They're like, Hey, it says on all these posts that, that bucktails and spoons and silver spoons work really well for snook. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm the snook fanatic in the family. And I say you throw the most realistic thing at these fish. It's crystal clear water off the beach. These snook can see everything, can feel everything. You got to be realistic. And uh, on the first day, my brother gets like a 40 inch snook on a spoon, just like this. And I was like, okay, you, you, beginner's luck. And then, you know, him and my dad kept throwing it and they got another one, like another 30 and then a 32 and then a 28. And I said, I'm done. So I cleared out the bait shop with like every silver spoon they had uh, and bucktails. And, and I would, I would test it. Right. Because that doesn't look real. It doesn't even have a paddle tail for vibration. It just hops up and down. Uh, that's really the only action it has. But I was able to sight fish more snook on this type of bucktail than I was something super realistic twitching in front of them in erratic. For, for some reason, this seemed to be the key. And it's because of its particular profile and the way that its action is. Every action of these lures are different. Spoons are different. They're, they're kind of wobbling and they're putting off a lot of flash and vibration. This is the complete opposite. It's up and down. It's really low profile. It's not going to cause a lot of vibration and disturbance unless you're hopping it through the sand. Um, but for some reason, this small, straightforward, just white little piece of hair got bit. 
and got bit a lot. It's crazy because there. Last time I checked, there are zero bait fish in the ocean that have horse hair coming out their butt. <laughs> right? It's nuts, and that thing keeps working. Uh, we mentioned it a few times before in the podcast when we had Mark uh, Sosan on, and he mentioned that in uh, in uh, the World War II, you know, they gave all the soldiers a little uh, kind of a survival pack in case they they were stranded. And in every single survival pack was a white bucktail. I think it was a one fourth ounce bucktail jig and some mono line. Uh, it was because it's like that one lure that can go catch fish anywhere. And yet it's just some lead and a hook and some horse hair. It it makes absolutely no sense, but it keeps working. That's that's what Luke remember in Marco Island. We first started getting into snook fishing. That's all we use. Millie's bucktail. And boom, I mean, that thing just, and it still produces today. I still have bucktails, especially fishing from the beach. I always have white bucktails on. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what both of us caught our first, you know, 36 inch plus snook with down there, Marco, bouncing that along passes down there and hold on tight. Yep. So what else, what, what else do you guys have? So in, in terms of maybe kind of move it over to the tried and true, we got the, the white, any color bucktail, uh, but we got the bucktail. We got the gold spoon, silver spoon, jerk, jerk shad, even, even white spoon too. So it seems like color. Uh, I did an experiment on the gold spoon. This is a silver metal gold spoon and the aqua dream white spoon. And I, I took it out. It was like three or four different days fishing for a couple hours. And I would do three casts, three casts with one, three casts with the other, and just keep going back and forth. Same rod, same reel, same line, not, you know, everything else kept constant. And not a single day did one catch fish while the other one didn't. You know, every day they both caught some. Some days a little bit more here. Um, and, and But overall, the trend was that they both caught about the same, but uh, more a snook on the white aqua dream compared to more redfish on the gold spoon, which was interesting. Um, and this has a little bit tighter wobble. So I don't know if it was the color or the wobble. But long story short, it was uh, my core lesson was that either one works. Right. Uh, it's really about getting in the right spot. And that should be the lesson that we all take from yeah. from all these is if you're in a good spot, you can get away with some imperfections in the in the lures. But, um, but even yeah, the even the even the black spoon works. Yeah. I, but you know what it is? You know why they don't make it very often? It's because fishermen weren't buying it. It's the same reason. Oh, that thing's just not going to work. But even a black spoon, I personally would go gold over that just for overall consistency. But I know a lot of those old school snook guys they they use a black spoon and it still works uh so but it it comes down to the manufacturer's got to make that decision all right we know this thing works but people aren't buying it so we got to make something a little bit more realistic to fool more fishermen uh and and i don't know it's i i see both sides of it um tr- i mean but look at look at what most of us here at salt Strong do right and if even look at our reports how often do you see uh, you know, ABC's companies, you know, most realistic, most realistic pinfish catching their, their PB, you know, fish. Normally it's just something super simple, like a paddle tail or a jerk shad or a, or a spoon. It's a, uh, it's, it's very, very interesting. And yeah, yet, not, we can do this podcast five times in a row and people still keep going buying crazy stuff and buying ducks, topwater ducks and all kinds of things that we see out there. Spiders and bats. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, one I'm interested in is so the you know some companies. This one's from Ear Lure, but they're starting to put um, more realistic patterns on their tried and true lures. So this is one of the I always get confused with the numbers, like something MR. I don't know, but this is just one of their one of their popular lures. It usually has kind of like a silvery flash to it, and now they're starting to put some super realistic designs on it. I'm I'm wondering if it's you know if it's any better or worse or if it's the same and you guys use these i just recently picked one up yeah it's not gonna to your point earlier it's not gonna change i mean those fish are coming from behind it they're not looking and analyzing the side of the stripes on there i mean it, that's my look, opinion but look at the clarity dude. <laughs> no but actually that's a really good point because those those you know those ci's that's like the meat that's the mr27 mullet they make them in a pilcher they you know a couple different sizes and mirror lure usually has a holographic side to it. So it begs to question which one's going to perform better, a lure with a lot of flash or a lure with a matte finish. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean, that might be something to test out in the future. Cause I'd look, I mean, I take the flash personally. Yeah, me too. I would always take the flash. I just think it's another thing that all you need is one click 
of a, of a sheen to get that reaction strike. And that's why I'll, I'll always fish with a flash lure, but I never thought about, is there any pro to wanting to fish with a matte colored lure? I don't know. Conversation for another day, but, uh, but interesting. Sounds but like from, a test from the part that counts most, right? They're pretty much the same. So you never know. Never yeah. Know. When, when in doubt, check the butts of your lure. <laughs> <laughs> you got horse hair coming out that butt. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, I got, you're the fear. <laughs> I got a, I got a different one. So this lure looks super goofy, but Come March and April and, and even in the fall months when the Spanish mackerel show up, um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these sell, uh, really because the, the mackerel and some small kingfish will eventually, you know, cut above the line and cut off the lure. But this looks this looks pretty dumb to me. Uh, it, it's just a solid piece of plastic. I think it's got a lead head and a little wire trace that holds your, your treble hook in place in the front and back. But these are a gotcha plug. Uh, a couple companies make this style body now, but it just sinks really fast and it darts left and right as it sinks. And it's just meant to be super erratic to get the attention of bluefish and Spanish mackerel. Uh, really seasonal lure. But if you've got, you know, bonito or fish that are, that are busting and going crazy, this has one of the most erratic actions out there and, and super easy to use. You just throw it out and you just jerk your rod and reel and it just kind of goes all over the place and it gets bit. But that does, that's no mullet right there. That, ain't no, that looks like nothing I've ever seen in the water. And, yeah. you, and Wyatt did a good report on that fishing from up here in North Carolina on that gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. It just kept working. He kept Spanish mackerel after mackerel. I have to say the most unrealistic lure I've caught the most fish on would have to be a gulp shrimp. It looks nothing like anything. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little stick with a little triangular tail on it. No legs, no nothing. And the colors. People always ask me about the color, you know, why you're rigging it upside down. The white should be on the bottom. Yeah. It doesn't it, matter. Catch I think fish. they mess. I'm wondering <laughs> if they mess that up because the new Kenny, the jerk pattern has the dark the darker color up top and the lighter on the bottom and then the shrimp it's the light up top the dark on the bottom and uh and that's just totally against the consumer behavior because yeah tony that video you did has a i think it has like a hundred plus thousand views and of all the on the comments there has to be 20 that are saying that you're an idiot for rigging it upside down <laughs> just because like they, they literally i don't think they would purposely make the shrimp on that are that's opposite to buyer behavior Oh, yeah. it, was, it was interesting. Well, for one thing, shrimp don't have really a color pattern. They're pretty much all the same color. So I don't know. I don't think yeah. the fish care. They, they don't analyze it that well to go, wait a minute, that color's not on the right side of that shrimp. I'm not eating it. <laughs> yeah, and that makes it even more funny that people are calling you an idiot for rigging it upside down because the, they're not they're not double-sided. Like they're, they're yeah. one, one color. I have plenty of video and pictures to prove. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I'll say another one as far as lures that look like they would be terrible and you should never get it, but actually are surprisingly good, is this bad boy right here for Barracuda. We were down in the Keys, and we put these things on. I have a lot of good footage will be coming out soon. They go crazy over these. This is a CUDA tube. It's a green tube, bright, bright green tube with one little hook on there, and it looks like a thing of seaweed, basically. But those, those CUDA go crazy over it. It insane. looks like a, a kind of an eel in the water and, and yet you could throw other things at them and they weren't touching it. Yeah. It was insane. I'm wondering how it does. I want to throw one under a snook light to maybe they think it's a ballyhoo or something going <laughs> through real quick. So I'm, I'm curious to see how that does. I've seen some guys take jig heads and put silicone tubing on them. Use that in duck, not in a dock lights. Yeah. Like, uh, um, the that that like yellowish tube yeah just yeah. napier um or even like a Publix or not a, like a mcdonald's straw or something i was like. just gonna say that instead <laughs> of using gotchas there's commercial guys that take a straw and they somehow jerry rig a hook on there and throw it out in mackerel schools and they're like oh yeah man i get these straws for free from mcdonald's i just put on a hook on it and, and they're getting fish on it and i'm like <laughs> that's ridiculous uh, sometimes it's just the simple stuff yeah. that works and yet all of us, maybe except for Tony, have been guilty time and time again of buying $20 lures and getting a little bit frustrated. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes up next uh, in terms of how, how more realistic can they make these things. 
And here's here's another one that I recently got. This is um, this is for sheep set as well, and this was highly recommended too. Like there was a lot of videos that was like really heavily touting this thing. It's made over in Australia, so it was fourteen dollars for this darn thing. And uh, I mean, it looks cool, looks realistic, but like these legs are like really hard rubber, and they don't move at all. And uh, and then comparing it to this crusty crab, which is like everything moves. I, I'm, I still haven't caught anything with it. Again. It, Almost all these will work. I'm sure they will catch some fish. It's just, it's just, are they better than the other options that are much less expensive? Yep. So twelve plus dollars for one, or eight dollars for two, and the eight dollars for two has totally crushed it as far as actually catching fish. And trust for those of you listening, maybe skeptical. Which we've spent a lot of money on this stuff. We want them to work, just like Luke. I mean, you don't want to spend twelve dollars on the crab and not have it. Not like we're hoping these things. We're just like all fishermen do. Um, oh, what, do, what do we got, Tony? Tony's. So this was probably my worst investment ever. <laughs> <laughs> this is an animated lure. As you can see it's got a prop on the nose. Oh, wow. my god! Water activated and you have to charge it. <laughs> so when you put it in the water, it sits there for a second. I actually did a video on it just to show people how ridiculous this lure is. But you put it in the water and that prop starts spinning and it swims around. You know, it swims around like a bait fish would. Please, please catch a fish on that. I'm afraid that if I actually did, it would probably break or fall apart. Something would get damaged. This prop is really fragile. That would definitely go. It's already rusted. I only had it in the water uh, once because <laughs> water can get into that little cavity where the prop is. And but I yeah, and was... I, re I remember Tony that that uh, ad they're running ads on uh, on social media for that dumb lure. And it had more shares than like any video, any how-to video we've ever put out on Facebook. And it's because fishermen are fishermen. They, oh my gosh, this is amazing because it goes by itself. And, and if you look at the footage on that video, remember, Luke, I showed this to you. They were stealing other people's videos, catching big fish that weren't even using their lure. You can even see it because we look at this stuff. We slowed it down and you could see the fish that was a big bass and it wasn't even that stupid lure. So they were, they, they had like no proof at work, but they had just stolen people's like some pretty big YouTubers that we know they had swiped their content and made it look like they were using their lures. And so all, you never saw the actual lure. You just saw them fighting a big fish and reeling it in. And I was like, man, what a scam. Uh, and I'm sorry you fell for it. That's uh, <laughs> maybe the glasses. Uh, maybe that was prior to five must not be wearing the glasses that day. Yeah. I'll before you wearing glasses, I have to say it was iCast's fault. Just like we were talking about, you know, iCast. They show all these fancy things, and people at iCast start talking about it. Say, hey, did you see this lure? It looks so amazing. And I was like, well, let me let me get that and do a video on it. And yep, I don't know, forty dollars, forty dollars down the hole there. Oh, that was forty. Wow, yeah. that's that's gotta be a record. I'm, I'm gonna spend that much. That was the most I've spent on one lure. There's people out there that spent a hundred dollars on like a handcrafted swim bait, though, over in like Lake Castaic in California. And big bass guys spend like upwards of three digits, you know, a, a pretty hundred dollar bill for a custom swim bait. Um, and sometimes they work, right? Like we're, we're talking about realistic lures. We're talking about, you know, throwing a realistic lure that might not perform as well as like an Alabama leprechaun. There's some realistic lures that do work. Okay. Like, you know, uh, we didn't pull or show this one up. This is, I think, a nine inch spool tech stretch. This is the mullet pattern. And I've got a couple of fish on this. Um, you got to really take care of it so that you don't get water and, uh, and rust up on the, on like the copper crimp, but uh, looks real, performs well, catches fish. But it's not it's not the same for every real looking lure. It's all about what you're fishing for. What's what's the presentation? What's the action of the lure? Um, it really just depends. Yeah. Don't get fooled either by, you know, pictures that you might see on the Internet of a realistic looker, uh, realistic looking lure hanging out of fish's mouth. Yeah. Most of these guys are, you know, sponsored, not bashing anybody in particular, but they're sponsored. Their sponsors want them to take pictures of yeah. lures with the fish. And oftentimes you'll just see a lure dangling out of fish's mouth. The hook isn't even through the fish's mouth. So just be careful about that. You know, we do post pictures of fish we catch with our lures, but we have video proof to back it up. Yeah. You can yeah. really see. The whole like, uh, you know, pick or it didn't happen. No, no, video <laughs> or it didn't happen. And yeah. we're covering that. So for sure. Yeah. And every, 
that's another thing why we're not sponsored. You know, everything we use is tried and true. That's why we have it on our shop page. That's why we promote it. So, yeah, and we're we're coming up. Uh, it, it might be another couple months because we want to do it right. But if you've made it this far, we'll let you kind of know about it. But really, uh, an inshore tackle index, just simplifying everything that you truly need to consistently catch fish all year long. And, and we just want to, cause that's what we want. We want it simple. Like no one wants to have to go spend an extra grand if they don't have to on a, on tackle to catch fish. And you got guys like everyone here. I mean, I, I watch Luke cause I get to fish with him once a week and he keeps using the same basic stuff, using Alabama leprechaun and a slam shady and same kind of jig heads and mono line. I mean, he's using the like most affordable stuff there is and consistently just catching fish. Cause Luke, you touched on it. All this stuff is great. We all love buying lures and we all love buying tackle. In fact, I think you should. Uh, it, it's, I mean, it is fun and it's unique and it's, it is kind of cool to even just buy something new and, and try it out, whether it be a lure, rod reel, et cetera. But end of the day, none of it matters unless you're in a feeding zone. And that's really the focus of our insider club. And, and now we're doing our live coaching calls every Thursday with our members. And of course we have our smart fishing game plan. Every, every Friday morning goes live. And uh, that's where in 10 minutes or less, we literally tell you exactly what types of spots to fish to catch inshore saltwater slams, redfish, speckled trout, snook, flounder, even some sheep's head and mangrove snapper, depending on the time of year. And uh, just try to simplify it. We, we want to make sure you're in the right spot with the right tackle at the right time and tide, et cetera. Uh, cause we know if we can help people catch more fish and create more memories, load up their phone with fish picks, you know, we're going to have members for life. Like we have, we've got so many now who are on their, their fifth year. We've got some five years. So we, we just hit our five year anniversary of our insider club. We've got some members now we're hitting their five year mark. So that is, uh, that is so, so, so cool that the majority of people stay many, many years. And it's, uh, it's been a blast. So for those of you who are members, guys, thank you and gals. Thank you so much. Uh, we're at, uh, I think almost 21, 22,000. And la last week I looked at it, like 22,000 or, or about to hit that number, uh, members, which is wild. Um, it, it, it's so cool. And the community's blown up. We have Richard in there now, who's actually calling our, our new members and welcome to making sure they get in the community. And then Austin on the back end is, is managing that day in and day out. It's, uh, it's been really cool. And of course we're missing Wyatt today. He might be out in the water fishing. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, he got a white got in a fight with a with a truck or a car. So trying to wear glasses right now. I know. I want to see what the I want to see what the car looks like. Yeah, you really beat it up good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, and also part of the club too is just is discounts on lures. So we want to make sure number one that you're in the right spot. You're in the feeding zones, and and we always base that on the recent trends, and then we look at the upcoming weather just to let you know, hey, this is what's been happening, but there's a front coming in, and so you need to do this modification. Um, so that's most important, but for the lures, for all these ones that are, that are tried through and, and, and tested, um, uh, we do make sure that, that members get everything at the best price possible that we can find. So we sell a lot of lures ourselves and, and we give significant savings for members. And then for, for other things too, sometimes we just negotiate group discounts with, with other companies where they can buy with, uh, you know, with a coupon code for that company. So that's just part of the club too. We want, we basically want to make sure that everybody more than more than covers their their cost of the dues from the the savings on their gear. Yep, that's it. And just keep watching our videos. We're literally going to tell you what's working. I mean, we're trying this stuff out ourselves. We're not. I don't know that I've spent forty dollars on an inshore lure like Tony, but and we're spending you know twenty twenty five. We we'd love for these things to work. Uh, in most cases you know, they might catch a fish, even that one Luke that you like, you know, you've caught a few tarpon on it. Uh, but I mean, we're ultimately our goal is to try to find lures that are consistent all year long with multiple species, you know, not, not just one, but there are times like our, our crusty crab. And we, you know, we kind of rolled our eyes at this thing too, because it was so expensive and yet these work. And so we will promote them all day long when they keep working like that for, uh, for sheepies and even some black drum and redfish caught on them. So, um, yeah, just stay tuned keep keep watching our stuff join the club you'll get to see all the behind the scenes stuff and, and see exactly what we're testing and uh and like luke said 20 percent off everything in the store at fishstrong.com and now even some exclusive lures like the power prawn and uh blackout chum and some other new uh new things uh what do we got the scent just came out that juice the juice is loose limited uh limited amount there but 
should have a lot more coming in soon. Yeah, I've got actually, Joe. I have uh, some footage because I put the juice on the on the uh, Slam Shady 2.0. And when it, uh, let me see if I can share that footage real quick. It's got some yeah. big trout. Oh, looks like it. Might you need me to here. make you uh, here. I'll make you co-host. Yeah. So this is this is just kind of so you can see exactly what we're talking about when these trout have to follow up their their prey. Oh, can you guys see it? Yep. So you can see this trout. Let me see if I can do the screen. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cr that's kind of creepy looking. Yeah. So you can see that trout. It's, it's been following it for a while. I'm, I'm going backwards now. So now I'm going forwards. You can see that trout follow, follow, follow. It's This is a 24 inch trout, by the way. It's so, dude, it's right. So, it's what, uh, if you're listening, it's a, uh, this trout is tracking this slam shady. And it's what, a, I don't know, four inches below it. It's obviously it's coming up now. Yeah, it's coming up now. So, it's getting really close. It's got his eyes like totally locked in. And watch, this is this is 60 frames per second. So it's starting to open his mouth one. Now it, it kicks the tail up. It like it really kicks the tail up. It's like every time. This has been amazing to see. And then game over. Totally <laughs> inhale it. That's, that's so cool. Yeah, this is a legit trout. And, and then you can start, like watch when they start fighting too, they'll they'll uh, they'll open up their mouths. This is why a lot of people lose their trout. They'll, it just literally just keeps his mouth open. And it's just trying his best to get that lure out of there. Dang. Pretty, uh, pretty cool. So wow. yeah, that, I have, and I caught, I literally caught at least, at least 12 big trout, most of which were over 20. And, and again, six of them were like 22 to 24 range. It was nuts. That's a baker's dozen there, Bab. Baker's dozen. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's just proof that, and that's this lure right here. That's the Slam Shady 2.0. Like, in, in a store, it wouldn't like stand out as being like super amazing. It just has really good action. Yep. No, that, that trout tracked it. Like you said, like he wasn't, oh, yeah. just, it wasn't reactionary. Like that fish looked at it and looked at it, looked at it and committed to it. I mean, that's. Yeah. That was the second big shot. shot on the same cast. So actually or just about 10 feet before that, I actually had one on and it got off and then the, and then the, the cameras settled down and started going again. And that, that thing came and tracked it down. It was yeah, and that's with like it's like a six inch big black camera like on the leader line like it you would think there's no way you're going to catch anything with it i think that's the importance of having action because I, I think just that tail moving around just took totally took the focus away from the big weird black object that was right in front of it and it was like it was <laughs> with, 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 with the light, light on red light on red light on <laughs> <laughs> you can see his eyes. he's totally he's totally tracking that lure and that's all he was looking at and uh, and even from the angle too, like the line wasn't even is a non total non issue. The line I probably could add eighty pound line on there is like once they start tracking it, the line is basically hidden by the lure itself. That for a straight a straight retrieve like that. But you know it's interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna be taking a lot of different lures out and and just seeing you know what exactly you know exactly how they they respond to different types of lures so. now, i think the scent because i know all that you had the dr juice scent on the new custom scent it would be interesting to see if you know some turned away without scent kind of just yeah. seeing it, how powerful the scent scent is so zero turned away for all of them yeah but that's because you had dr right, juice on it's impossible right, to turn yeah, yeah. 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 I, I can't say that for certain but all i'm ever certain is that looking at the footage every single one that started tracking was game over like it I didn't catch them all because, you know, sometimes the lure pull out. Um, but, but, and it's, it was just shocking that they just totally just hammered that thing. That was pretty cool. Wow. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to more of that. I'm looking forward to Tony uh, one day catching some fish on this $40 animated lure or whatever it is. I don't even know if it works anymore. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, too funny. Cool. Well, guys, this is a good one. Uh, everyone, let us know your thoughts. We post all of these podcasts, whether you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher, Spotify, we have them all at saltstrong.com and come and join us in the club. Just 27 cents a day. And we have 100% money back guarantee. Something you can finally be proud to tell your spouse. I just saved a ton of money. I'm catching more fish. I'm going to take you out there with me. I'm so confident. I'm going to put you on some fish. Oh, snap. Come join us there at saltstrong.com. We appreciate all of you. We're having a lot of fun. And we're having fun with these coaching. Co what? Oh! <laughs> He's here. <laughs> Wyatt. What's going on? Dude, a little, a little bit late to the party, but. Oh, I apologize. I thought we were doing this at 1130. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I forgot to mention since you're on Texas time that uh, it was 1130 Eastern. Oh, my goodness. <laughs>
<laughs> you had a perfect time right before the end, though. So you still yeah. We're it. we're literally closing up right now, and we were we were talking. Was like, where is Wyatt? Um, I right, so real quick, tell us what what you're gonna what lure were you going to show that maybe his uh his fooled you as a fisherman and didn't fool as many fish. Goodness, this chase bait's drunken mullet. This is probably the biggest dupe that I ever had, and it's it's a lot. <laughs> It's a lot like the Whopper Plopper, but I, I mean, it just, it's never performed for me. And it cost me probably the price of three or four of my super spook juniors and it performs nowhere close at all whatsoever to it. Uh, and what is it called? The, the chase baits drunken mullet. It's got like a jointed body with a weird little propeller tail. It's just, it's not even it honestly scares away fish. I've seen it scare away redfish, so I, I wouldn't recommend this thing at all. It, it just makes too much noise. Maybe it would be good in super choppy water, but I've tried it in those conditions, and it's never, ever produced. Yep. That's too funny, man. But you can see on the sides, they made it look realistic. Yeah, but it doesn't produce as well as the Super Spook Junior, which is just that simple little torpedo body that uh, produces for me pretty much every time. Yep. Keep it simple. Yeah. We talked about that. We even, we mentioned you earlier. Uh, what did you have the gotcha plug, Justin? And it, it looks nothing like anything in the water and it keeps working. Goodness. Yeah. I've caught a lot of Spanish mackerel with that thing. And I mean, I've outfished a lot of other guys on the pier that were using, you know, similar jigs, but they were the expensive flashy, or it had some kind of extra feathers on it. The action is really what's been most important for all these lures from what I've seen. And yeah. even water coverage too, like in that, the gotcha, especially for Spanish mackerel, they're the roamers, like they could be all over the place. And if you get a, a plug like the gotcha, that cast and out, it's like a bullet. There's like no wind resistance. It's it's just a real dense, you know, um, kind of aerodynamic. It looks like it basically like an arrow that thing launches. So um, the pier fishing, I think that's like hard to beat. You can, you can cover more ground than everybody else. And it has good action in the water. Good enough. And uh, that thing produces. Cool. Well, guys, we're approaching now 50 minutes. <laughs> Minus Wyatt. <laughs> it's been three minutes. The best but, uh, can, that was, best that was awesome. Up. We were literally about to hit stop and you, all of a sudden you, you, uh, you jumped, jumped in. So <laughs> I'm glad I got to come in here at the, uh, the last second. I'm, I'm mad at my computer. It told me 1130. I thought it had corrected for the, uh, the time change. Oh yeah. And time to yeah, end this crazy. Uh, time. So, all right, well guys come join us at the insider club where you get all of us and Wyatt, who's usually always on time, even a few minutes early. So, um, God, this was he, a fun he was early. He was early. If it was, you know, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. Thanks guys. Peace. We out. Cause fishing, it's in my soul. It was